What's up, everybody? This is Steve Stralacci, and today we are giving my first impression, my first look at the new Kemper player. Kemper has been one of the things that I've kind of never gotten to try. Um, I've literally never even plugged into a Kemper before, but obviously um, everybody knows what it's capable of, what it does, and how great it is. I mean, it's been probably the most widely accepted digital amp solution for the last 11 years. I mean, you could still go to any major studio today and you'll see um, Kempers and you'll hear people sing Kempers praises. Sure, there are other options out there nowadays that do uh, amp capturing, profiling, quad cortex, tonex, um, neural amp modeler, all sorts of stuff that are doing this now. But um, Kempers kind of been lacking in new products. They released the stage, which is the little floorboard, and they have the toasters and the rack that they've had forever. So they've kind of been in desperate need for a new, fresh take on what they do. And that is where this little profiler player comes into play. So this is a three button foot switch version of the big guys. And there's a lot to talk about with this. Um, a lot of interesting stuff. So basically what you're getting here, you're getting a scaled down version of a Kemper. So you can't do a full signal chain. You can do two effects prior, two effects post. And that's really, I mean, for me, that's probably all I would use this for. I can't see this being an all-in-one solution unless you have really bare minimum needs. Um, so you can definitely get away with just using this. Um, but what I picture this being is kind of a amp replacement. So I would take my real pedal board, just throw this on the floor and have my amp sounds dialed in on the floor. You have 50 presets available to you at all times. So you have 10 banks of five. So you have one, two, three, four, five that you can button press here, or you can bank through. But now when you get to five, it doesn't go back to one. It actually goes to the next bank of rigs. So this is five rigs here. And this will go to a whole new separate bank of five. So if you want to go from five to one, you have to go all the way back. You can customize the foot switches. You could do a lot of cool things with this. Um, you could do combo presses where you can press the two at once and make something happen, turn an effect on and off. Um, this is just how it comes stock. I haven't really gotten to dial in my workflow and exactly how I want to do this yet. But for right now, they have this as the effect on and off. And these are just banking up and down through your rigs. Uh, for now, those are the stock 50 that you have easy access to right there. Um, no screen, obviously, which can be problematic if you're not somebody that's uh, tech savvy, then you don't want to use the rig manager on your phone or your laptop. Um, I've got it up on my laptop. I had it running off my phone via Wi-Fi and it works pretty good. It's pretty intuitive. It's easy to follow. Everything is pretty clear cut right there. But as far as making adjustments and building rigs on the unit, you really can't. Um, so this is definitely something that you build at home, get everything dialed in at home, and then take it with you. And uh, I guess you hope that everything goes well. You do have gain, bass, middle, treble, but um, you will have your phone. I mean, everybody has their phone on them nowadays. So having your phone hooked up, uh, maybe when you get to a sound check, would be advisable, just in case something goes a little bit crazy. As a newbie to Kemper, things that I, I find cool that I've never experience before. Um, the gain is auto leveling. So if you lower or raise the gain, it actually automatically uh, corrects your level, which is something really interesting that I don't think any other modelers do or any, I mean, I don't think any other units that I have at least do that. Um, usually preset leveling is a pretty uh, hefty talked about topic. And this kind of does that for you. And then you have your overall rig volume if you need to uh, tweak any of that. And then you got a couple of effects. So let's talk about some of the kind of cons here. Um, it is expensive. It's uh, 700 bucks and you aren't getting the full suite of effects that come with the bigger ones. So this is kind of where it gets interesting. Um, compared to like the HX stomp, like the line six HX stomp, um, even fractal does this too, where they don't put all of the options into the smaller units. Like the, I think line six is probably the only one that has the different, um, levels of floorboard that, lets you put whatever you want in it, regardless of how much DSP it takes. From what I understand, again, I'm a Kemper newbie here. Um, there are a lot of new effects that aren't released or aren't available in the player yet or at all. I don't know what their future plan is, but that's a little off-putting, I guess, that you can't have all of the effects, whether whether they fit or not, is, is different. I mean, there's only a couple of drives and a couple of uh, delay and reverb options but I'm sure there's a lot more in the bigger versions. Um, somebody that maybe is an expert there can can chime in below and uh, help us out there. So I guess they're maybe trying to keep you under that DSP cap by uh, not including more DSP heavy effects. 
Um, and the price, again, we said seven, 700 bucks or whatever it is, 698 shipped. And these are made in Germany by the people at Kemper. So there's nothing outsourced overseas, I don't think. Um, so that's definitely worth noting that you're getting, you know, made in German product. I do believe that Tonex is also made in Italy. So they're also using that. So that's something to keep in mind when you have Tonex that does the AI ant modeling, uh, profiling, capturing, whatever it is. And, um, that's only a couple hundred bucks, uh, probably close to half the price of this. Um, but that has no effects. That's got just like some light compression and uh, reverb, which are kind of arbitrary effects. I wouldn't call them actually effective, if that makes sense. So, so far, the tones that I've just been messing around with are um, pretty good. I mean, for stock presets, they're definitely not bad. I mean, all of these are established profiles. So it's like a gift and a curse that this is 11 year old technology that there's a very hefty library up on the rig exchange. And a lot of third party people are, uh, putting up premium presets or premium rigs profiles and packs that, you know, are done professionally in studio. So you have a lot to choose from that are already dialed in. So, you know, the sounds are going to be great so far. The feel is really great. I'm playing it under your fingers. I'm using my, uh, well, not my, I have it here on loan, but this is my nags. Can I, that is on loan here from the New York Nags guy. Um, he's the number one Nags dealer in the country. Thanks, Shredder, for loaning me this. And it's the perfect guitar for this because it matches the color. So let's get into some of these sounds. I'll be monitoring direct and any of the gear that you see me use in the video, I'll have links to below. And let's see what we got. <laughs> I mean, that's just stock preset one. What's the effect? Nice. You're only hearing a mono delay. Um, I've got my headphones plugged into the player. So I'm hearing stereo, but you're only hearing mono because there is only a mono XLR out, something that a lot of people have been talking about. You can go mo dual mono out into like stereo effects, but, um, like the stereo delay I'm hearing in my headphones, you're not hearing because it's just XLR to my interface. I mean, that's one one preset that's sounds pretty great um let's see if we dial back cool let's uh just bank through now this is preset two this is a Morgan AC20, so uh, Morgan AC20. Cool. So you got a little ducking tremolo there. That sounds really nice. Um, uh, what do we got here? Tiny, 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 teeny feet. There we go. Nice, solid, clean. We got some cool spring reverb. That's really good spring reverb. Um, that's one thing I always read about Kemper was that the spring re reverb is really good. 
sounds pretty legit. <laughs> So far, effects from Kemper, very nice. Uh, perfectly dialed in tremolo here. <laughs> I mean, we could just go on through this for hours. I do want to show you um, a couple of other things. It's really easy to get different rigs. So if we go over to rig exchange here. So when I go just to this, I have 20,000 things to choose from. And um, you could just search, I guess, right? Where's the search? Can I search? There's got to be a way to search. Um, you could filter by number of votes, date added, um, crowd rating. And you can also just search through here and... I mean, you could find anything you need. I can't imagine. Um, I'm sure there's some pretty bad ones under here. It definitely gets a little bit overwhelming seeing 20,000 here. But you also have rig packs that are, I guess, Kemper certified or whatever you want to call them. And there's a lot of these with the liquid profiles that let you change everything like an amp modeler. They have all these like legend things where all these tribute packs and these all come with it. So you're getting so much here and you could just double click it and it'll pull it in. And um, it imports it like that to audition at least. <laughs> it's a nice sound. Was that, that's like an AC type of sound. What do we got here? Does it tell you? Uh, voice Ace 50. So I assume that's a Vox AC 50 with a third power cabinet. That's very cool. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff to keep you busy here. And then you have your My Profile, and you can set up performances. Um, this is like a, your set list, I assume. So you can just drop things into here and um, be able to find them easy access if you have a set list that you need to change these on. Um, I definitely always highly suggest the Michael Britt stuff. Um, he's going to have a pack for this coming out in the coming week, and I'm definitely going to be getting that because I'm just a huge fan of his stuff. Let's see what uh, some of his presets sound like. So now to me, that's a little bright. So I'm going to make an adjustment. So now this is a liquid profile, so you should be able to make all the adjustments uh, like you actually would. It's good if you good twang, a little telly act. So I want to see what this... What is this bypassing? Okay, so this is a compressor here that this is bypassing. All 
All right. So, so far, I mean, a lot of really good tones. I mean, so far, I don't really feel like there's stuff that needs to be adjusted. Um, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So we're going to get into some cons here. Um, obviously, super overwhelming. There's so much to choose from. And that's kind of the um, gift and curse of profiling, because when you find a great one, you just stick with it and it's going to be good forever. But finding that good one could take a really long time. That's just with profilers in general. But now with the liquid profiling, I guess it makes things a lot easier because you can actually tweak them like an amp modeler. So I can't see any of that being a con necessarily, but it is overwhelming when you're looking at all of the stuff to choose from. But uh, just get a Michael Britt pack and call today. Make your adjustments on there. Um, other things. There are rumors that this is going to have um, paid upgrades to it. And I'm a little bit indifferent about this because it's almost like it comes with the hardware to do things, but you're going to have to pay extra to uh, unlock those features. I mean, you paid for the unit and it's not cheap. It's pretty expensive at 700 bucks, but introducing downloadable content for a cost and for a fee. Um, this is coming from the Kemper forum, by the way, from Christoph, I believe. There's a couple things I would pay for, I think. Um, I don't know anything about morphing yet or about what the other units can do, but I know this cannot profile. So that's a big problem for me personally, because I bought this in hopes that I can make profiles of my own amps and um, realizing that this can't do profiling is a pretty much downer for me. But if, um, if that becomes a paid feature, I also can understand that because if you don't make profiles and you just want to buy profiles or use what's stock, then that's great. You don't, you shouldn't have to pay for the profiling if you don't plan on using it. But for somebody like me that could make these and put them up for sale, I think it's okay to buy that feature. Um, if it was a couple bucks to uh, unlock the ability to uh, do the capture through rig manager or through a, like a, through a reamp box or something, I'm sure we can figure out a way to route that and make it work. But um, other than that, I don't know what else would be unlockable. Um, if it was the new effects, then I think that's definitely annoying and frustrating as a, uh, as somebody that might have the bigger units, they might get frustrated that you can't port over your better, newer effects and you're kind of stuck with what they decided would fit. Um, and morphing, I guess I got to look at, I guess that's kind of like parameter changing and parameter shifting, um, through a foot switch, uh, for this, maybe not the biggest deal for me because I wouldn't see this as a gigging floorboard option. I would only use this probably as amp sounds and use my real pedal board with it or another multi effects going into this. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of the Kemper player. Uh, profiler player. I keep messing up the name, I think, but uh, let me know what you think of this in the comments below. Is this something that you would want to be checking out and uh, what do you want to see on it in the future? And if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.